Hello, so let's uh, take a look at how to make a custom scroll bar for uh, Live Code and uh, Live Code Mobile. So I'm going to actually use Animation Engine to do this. And uh, so I do have Animation Engine open. This here is my script editor. So here we go Animation Engine 4. And here's your Animation Engine docs. So I've already actually created the scroll bar so I'm gonna show you what the scroll bar does and what I mean by scroll bar is um, you know when you're in uh, live code on the desktop if you take one of these here you get obviously a scroll bar or well in iOS everything's motif so let's just take a look at the simulator at the native scroll bar and this one here I've created which I will show you uh, how I did it so first let's save it and where is my simulator oh it's at the bottom here so here you can go you can see that this motif background I'll click on the screen here looks but ugly and probably won't get you uh, very far in app review. Now here's our custom scroll bar which is made with uh, live code and animation engine. And as you can see it works pretty good. It's actually very simple. Um, this rect here where you can see where it's white that's one rect. The thumb control thing right here that's a, a nur rect. This blue area is a third rect and there is a fourth graphic that uh, will help us return this number that you see in the field. So what could we use this for? Well you know in live code they do have a uh, sound playback so we could use this as 0 to be mute and 100 to be as loud as possible for maybe our sound playback with when, within one of our channels. So let's take a look at how we did this and it's very simple. First of all let's get rid of this uh, original scroll bar here. So first of all we have a field which I bring this on screen. We have another rect which I call graphic scroll bar or scroll area. I have graphic thumb one and maybe to actually see this let's move this over a little bit. It does work in a desktop also. Then I have what's called graphic fill and then there is a last graphic that you won't see unless I pop this up so let's get this uh, mobile test it's called line start it is currently it's not hidden but it is at the bottom layer so let's bring that to top oops let's bring that to top there you go see this little line there and what that line is doing let's uh, go into run mode is it's at dead center of our thumb position graphic when it returns zero. Okay? So let's put that all the way back down to the back layer because we don't need to see that. So how am I moving this? Okay? First of all, let's open up my script editor. And I've already done the scripts for you. I'm just going to show you how I did it. Let's get a preference open to make the view a little bit bigger here. Uh, maybe 18. 18 should be good. Maybe you'll see that. Okay, first of all, on OpenStack, we need to issue uh, Start Using Stack Animation Engine. This makes it of all uh, Animation Engine's messages available for us to use. Okay. And now let's go into the card and it does kind of wrap here but I want to make it big enough so you can see it so all I'm doing is I'm setting the constrained rectangular of the graphic this thumb graphic that's this one here let's see if I can resize this so, and so the graphic thumb to the rect of graphic scroll area so the rect of graphic scroll area is this object here so this is constrained to this. That makes it 
draggable within this rect. Okay, very simple. So you can see how simple that is. We just do that on an open card. Okay, now all the rest of our magic here is done right here in this thumb control, right here. So when we touch it and drag it, we are getting messages. So let's take a look at those. So graphic thumb, okay. So what we use in Animation Engine, let's take a look actually at the Animation Engine docs for a second. And they should be here. Okay, I see them. And let's look at constrain the constrain rectangular thing, which I believe is a property. So let's, yeah, we won't get that up. So if we look down here, and let me click a couple times, you'll see. You might also use the following messages to avoid conflicts. So on mouse down, which would be touch start. Uh, mouse up, which would be like uh, touch end. Mouse release would be like touch release. And mouse move would be like touch move. Well, we'd use these constrained rectangular uh, messages or handlers instead. So that's what we're doing in this script. So on constrain, this would be like on touch start, we are setting the constrained rectangular of the graphic fill. So this graphic here, this blue thing, we're setting that constraint to, again, this rectangular constraint. So we make sure that that graphic, as it's changing sizes, stays within the constraint of that scroll bar area. Okay, very simple. Okay, um, we don't do anything on the up right now. This probably would be useful when you wanted to get this value that's in this field and put it towards whatever you're doing. So on the move command, we do a number of different things. So what we're doing is we're getting the distance from that start line. Remember that line that I was telling you about that's actually all the way at the bottom. Let's, let's bring that up again. Let's get the application browser back up. And let's take this line and let's send its layer all the way to the top. So that line right now is at zero location to our thumb graphic. So what we are doing when we move this is we are getting the distance from that line to the center of our thumb graphic. And we're putting that into this T convert number. So let's, let's look at that again, move, and you can see there's a number being returned. Okay, so let's go back into our application browser. Let's select that line again. Let's send it all the way to the back. So every time that moves, so let's take a look at the rest of the script here. So we're putting it into this uh, number here. What we're then doing is we're taking that T number value and we're adding 25 to it and we're putting it into a variable called T fill move. So right at the next line, that graphic fill, that blue fill, when we move, let's move it again, this blue area is changing the width. And it does it right here at set the width of graphic, graphic fill to T move. Why do we add 25 to it? We don't, you know, if you didn't add 25, would it still move? It would. But what it does, if we don't add the 25 to it, which is sort of like when we're moving this, it's adding... Um, so the size would be pretty much half of this. So when we're moving this, if we didn't add that value of plus 25 to it, you would see some kind of flashing or flickering because the background is white. So the plus 25 makes it look appealing. Okay. Now, because let's take a look at our scroll area here. Again, this is 250 in width. Okay, and we initially put this value over here. Half of that is 50. So what we need to do, so we have 25 in the center, and then when we move this all the way over here, there's another 25. So uh, 200 is really the scroll area between 0 and 100. Well, how do we convert that? 
you know, it, it would return, the distance would return actually 0 to 200. Well, we just do a little math. So let's go back over here. So what we put that T number and we divide it by 2 and that gives us a value between 0 and 100. But what does happen is we need to round that. We need to round that T convert number and we put it back into uh, T convert number. And for here, for the convenience of our example, I'm just putting that T convert number into a field. But So all we're doing is very simple. It's very simple using Animation Engine and a few things from live code and we can make a custom scroll bar. And you can use any kind of graphic you want. I mean, this was very simple. I used all the graphics, uh, the vector graphics built into live code. And this takes really no time whatsoever to make your own custom touch scroll bar. Now, the size of this is 50. Let's take a look at that. Um, the minimum size of a target should be 44 pixels uh, by Apple's uh, own information that they give you. It's a successful target. And uh, so you can actually create the same kind of scroll bar effect as some of the native uh, scroll bar controls, or you can make a custom one uh, for anything. So if you're making a game per se and you want to use uh, some funky graphics, you can, but it's very simple. And so we're using uh, Multi de Brill's Animation Engine 4. Works great with uh, all this. And let's do the simulate one more time. So we can see this unfold in front of your eyes through the simulator. And we bring it back up. And there you go. You can see it's perfectly working. So you can create scroll bars really simple using Animation Engine and Live Code. And you probably don't have to use Animation Engine if you're very good with mathematics. But you know what? Animation Engine saves you so much time. And you can do this probably in less than 20 to 30 minutes tops. And once you have one... All you have to do is save it and recreate it over and over and over and over again. So I hope you learned something today uh, to help you with uh, doing uh, custom scroll bars for either uh, iOS or you can refer to the desktop. And it works with Mac, Windows, Linux, you name it. So Animation Engine 4, if you don't have it, uh, go to uh, Live Code's website and download the demo. I think... Uh, Malte gives you about 14-day trial, and it's well worth it. Okay, peace. Have fun.